Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I uh, hope you're doing well wherever you are on this blowy, windy, cold summer's day, 6th of July, uh, Tuesday, the 6th of July, 2021. Uh, yeah, so welcome um, to Yoga Solutions. Uh, I uh, didn't get any questions this week, so uh, I will share something with you that I'm kind of on at the moment that um, I think you will find interesting. Uh, I, I had some tech problems this morning, so hence the slight lateness, and I would have put a title up if uh, my computer would have, would have allowed me. But the, um, because it, it's quite a significant thing. Um, I want to talk to you about the breath. It, Okay, so I'm going to backtrack a little way um, because the the background the the background thing that I want to get past and that I want to offer you to get past is the idea of um, what is right and what is wrong in in yoga practice. It, it's perfectly natural when we're when we're learning when we're trying to find better ways of doing things. It's perfectly natural to uh, attach to the suggestions that we're given. You know, uh, we, we, um, we kind of, on a very base level, we, we learn it for the postures. So, you know, um, someone teaches you to spread your hands in dog pose and it seems to help. And then spreading your hands becomes the thing you do before you even start dog pose. So, so it becomes a rule and not that it's not helpful it is uh, the, that that was the reason it was given to you in the first place but what what is restrictive is when we attach to those rules as that is how that 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 is that is <laughs> and therefore we have to do it and to not do it doesn't make sense that that's the thing that restricts practice and uh, <clears throat> on my own, for my own yoga journey, I, I was given plenty of rules, like um, like everyone. And over my uh, yoga journey, those rules to start with were very useful. They were useful things to hang my hat on as um, as I developed my practice. And things like uh, the neck needs to be long, the lower back needs to be uh, uh, not holding your weight up. Um, what else? Uh, I, I had some unusual rules because I, I, I did all my learning uh, after I, you know, um, I, well, I did my learning from books. So I, I essentially taught myself as a child. But when I came back to it as an adult, I did all my learning within the Scaravelli inspired sort of um, range of instructions and understandings so um i also had rules like um you don't lock your knees um you don't push you don't pull um you relax i had the, all these rules and um yeah you, you let go of tension and uh, they're all important principles behind which well they're all imp important rules of thumb behind which is a principle. The, the, the rules themselves um, are entirely open to inter personal interpretation. The intention and the principle behind it is much broader. And if you can get to the place of investigating why a particular rule is in place, then you might get a, a clearer picture of what, it, what it's about. Um, for example, if you don't use your hands in dog pose, if you don't respond to contact, then you're likely to have an experience of heaviness in the body because um, there's no outward response. So the body will be busy proprioceptively holding itself in place so that um, so, so you don't fall over. OK, so the, that rule, that simple rule, for example, spread your hands um, <clears throat> it has a purpose. And if you can tap into the purpose, then you can be free of the rule because 
whilst you're spreading your hands, um, the whole body will be responding in a particular way. And, and you'll quite likely miss some of the other possibilities, some of the other possibilities of release and other things. Um, so, yeah, it might be seeming a bit vague at the moment. But, um, yes, in my own yoga journey, uh, I, I will get to the point, but in my own yoga journey, what I've discovered is my major breakthroughs, major shifts in understanding and clarity around practice have all happened when I was prepared to drop a rule. <laughs> when I was prepared to let go of all the things that I hooked my hat on, that I, that I um, attached to, that I clinged onto as knowing what I'm doing. Um, example letting go of the spreading of the hands allowed me to find balance, structure, tr structural release through my bones as I find um, dog pose, uh, the meaning of dog pose. Things like letting go of that intention to keep my neck long uh, allowed my chest to relax and allowed other things to arise that in my early days would have felt like a, a short neck. Why? All sorts of reasons. The, the, the long neck is to stop you putting weight down against a bent spine, basically. But um, if you hold your neck long, what you're doing is you're holding yourself up with your lower back. And um, so your whole practice is based on tension around that area. And until you realise that, uh, you won't be able to work out how to change it. And, and the holding of anything it's an artifice, it's a, it's a contrivance. The contrivance that is kind of not dissimilar to the holding patterns that you're trying to extricate yourself from. They're just new holding patterns that you've imposed in order to follow the rules. And um, yeah. So, first suggestion is anything that you are attached to as a hard and fast rule what happens if you let it go what happens if if that is no longer true what happens if you got that wrong i'm not saying that it is wrong but i'm what i'm saying is that the the likely application the way you've applied yourself to that and the, and the ideas behind it won't be the whole truth. There'll be some ideas that are keeping you from a different experience. So let go. This is my first suggestion. Let go of the rules. And maybe you, in practice, through your own body and your own explorations, if your intention is to not do that thing, that seems to help, um, you might come back to it with a new perspective, with a, with a new understanding of what it's for and why. You know, so uh, that, that's my first suggestion is let go of the rules and in favor of um, exploring, exploring your practice uh, with the baseline intent of looking for support, freedom, etc., etc., whatever it is that you're looking for. Okay, that's, uh, that's my first suggestion. And it brings me on to the, the, the thing I want to talk about today the breath. Um, Yeah, you might notice when um, when you're working hard to do your postures, the thing, one of the things that gets difficult is breathing, probably. And I, I remember one of my rules that I was taught was the, that you should never, in the scarabelli inspired approach, you should never feel like the breath is interfered with by what you're doing. So, and, and it's, a use, it's a useful principle, it's an idea. But the, the, the idea is that, um, well, essentially, if you're, if you're um, holding yourself with tension, then that action will restrict the breath. And, uh, and it's not very pleasant. You can't sustain it for any length of time. The breath is immutable. Eventually, you will have to stop doing what you're doing. Um, but that if, if you're habitually working uh interfering with the breath and just doing the postures 
then the outcome will be you can't breathe whilst you work particularly um so it's a sensible rule but it's a rule that i started letting go of uh, probably 20 years ago now when i i found myself working to solve um severe sciatica born of a prolapse disc uh, i was um, i was in i was attending my teach training at the time um it was more than 20 years ago now i was attending my teach training course at the time and um yeah i suffered a prolapse disc and yeah this idea of you, you shouldn't force the breath in any shape or form was there so i was secretly <laughs> Uh, in my own practice, what I discovered was holding the breath helped. It helped me find better relationships within. It helped me find relief for my sciatica. It helped me find what well, helped me stay steadily with what I was doing to improve the situation around the prolapse disc. And uh, I didn't tell anyone about it because it was illegal. <laughs> okay. Um, that was the beginning of my secret affair with um, breath retention and uh, with study and learning breath, you know and I got to understand that breath retention is actually a pranayama practice and uh, there's all sorts of um, sort of uh, cultural fear around engaging with pranayama when you don't know what you're doing um, uh, could, uh, I, I'm not sure what tradition it comes from, but it's, it's considered a dangerous thing to do. And um, and I involved myself with breath on a very deep level, perhaps not being advanced enough to do so. So yet another secret, <laughs> another secret practice of working with the breath. And uh, it got me to the place of working. Uh, pranayama and posture, to me, are the same thing. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're not different. Um, so breath retention, and that, that's the thing that I want to share with you today. Um, it's perfectly natural. And that's, that, that was my, that was the thing that I used to um, soothe my fears around doing, the, doing what was illegal. Um, this awareness it, it's perfectly natural if you pick up a heavy weight if you if you go and try and push a car if you um are trying to move some concrete blocks when you pick the thing up what do you do you hold the breath why the body's protecting itself i suppose it's, it, that's the way i originally saw it is everything's bracing um in order to protect the body from falling apart and holding the breath within with a bit of pressure and the squeezing and all the rest of it would give you that internal sort of support if you like that's the way i rationalized it when i first sort of noticed that holding the breath was a natural function of um, effort sometimes for some people and I, I was i was still thought that it was wrong in, in on some level because i was still attached to the rule and um so within that, um, I, I tried to work out how to engage with the action of holding the breath, but allow the breath to go within the effort of it. And if you, if you want to um, try this out, yes, I, I want to. Yeah, I want to give you an experience so I can make sense of it, uh, and it'll be a lecture. But then nothing will be learned because. Um, you won't have experienced anything. So what I'd like you to do is to uh, join me in, I think we'll, we'll start with just a sitting twist, all right? Hope the microphone's all right. I, I've uh, bit the bullet and forked out for another professional microphone. I won't be getting the, the road Go mic again because uh, that's the thing, cost me a bloody fortune and it, it just packed up on me. So I'm not very impressed. Um, so um, anyway, uh, I'm getting myself a professional mic. I hope this one is okay for now. So here we are sitting, all right? And first of all, just to build this up from the ground, um, relax. Okay, so you, you can feel your back relax. You give your weight down. 
perhaps you stop lifting your head to look at me. Um, it might be useful to see me, but um, so you know what I'm talking about. But just relax. And in that relaxation, follow the rhythms of breathing that go with letting go to your ground. And that, that's the starting point, because the um, majority of us don't feel supported as we breathe. So we tend to lift. When, 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 if I tell you to take a breath, you'll lift with your back uh, in order to breathe. And then when you release that, you'll drop again. So if the first starting point is learning how to let go into your ground to breathe, so your back doesn't have to do the lifting. And the result will be a sense of the breath arriving behind you, as a sort of surface you can rest into. And if that can travel all the way to the back of the head and neck, then you, you start to find all the things that you're taught to do in yoga. And then when you release the breath, if there is a similar sense of let go into your contact, then instead of your weight falling towards the ground, your weight is given to the ground through the base. Okay. So if you've got that relaxed relationship to the ground through the breath, I'd like you to put your hands together. And if you want the shoulders to be, be free, you need to lean your hands together so that um, from the left hand, your right shoulder feels supported. And from the right hand, your left shoulder feels supported. So the leaning of the hands frees up your shoulders. Okay, that's the start. See if you can, with that, see if you can find a similar release into your base. That is the arrival of the breath and the release of the breath. And if you're finding that, then there'll be a quiet sense of emptying within as you release the breath and a quiet sense of relaxed sort of support as you trust the breath to climb through the spine, I suppose, as you lean into your hands so your shoulders are not too heavy on the spine. Now I'm going to, I want you to add a turn in one direction. No, let's make it turning to the right. So turn yourself to the right and notice how the breath is restricted. And uh, one of the reasons that will be happening is because uh, you won't be supporting yourself externally. If you had your hands there, you could lean into your hands, you could relax. But I, I, want, the, I want you to turn from the spine itself, from, and, and you'll find there's all sorts of tension going on. You can, you can hear in my voice as a, the, the breath is slightly restricted. And in, in um, normal yoga, <laughs> you would be taking small sips of the breath, you know, the, allowing the breath to come into the degree that your efforts, your holding efforts allow. And it, it, you know, it won't be that easy. And then you get to kind of release into the posture with the release of the breath. So the, the, um, if you experience that, what you're feeling is your body kind of pulling on itself to turn you. That's, that's, the, that's what you're doing. The muscles, you know, uh, try the other side. Um, uh, probably uh, one of your groins is, is uh, pulling you around. Probably your belly muscles are involved. Your rib cage is obviously involved because that's where you turn from generally. Um, your back might be pulling to lift you, whilst your belly is pulling to pull you down. And, and all those things going on will feel like a restriction of the breath. And e even so, notice that if you can uh, relax the pelvic floor and sort of get a sense of landing on your base to breathe, all those efforts start to become a little easier. So I'll say that again. 
you're engaging with effort to turn yourself. Okay. And if that's all you're doing, then the breath will feel like you can only sip it. But if you are engaging with turning yourself, and you can still kind of give to your ground to breathe, you'll get a more, um, the, the activity of supporting yourself will relate to the ground, and the breath will be a little more supportive. And then the release of the breath, if you simply release all effort, you'll come out of it. But if you are able to release into your ground, where you make contact, there's the potential to let go of pressure within, as opposed to dropping your weight down. So you get the benefit not only of um, you get the benefit not only of the release of the breath, which uh, naturally allows the musculature of the release of the breath to turn you, but if the arriving breath can begin with the ground, then the arriving breath, still restricted probably, but it, it, it becomes an expression of what you're doing. And the release of the breath becomes more of a release into what you're doing. Okay. So let's um, take it one stage further. So start by relaxing. Relax your back. So what we're going to do, once things have calmed down, so I want you to take a, a gentle breath, a, a small breath, and then instantly bear down. Bear down from your chest, bear down to the ground in order to move. Okay, so relax, take a small breath, hold the breath, and then from your chest and your core, you bear down into your ground, ideally with a relaxed pelvic floor. And you can retain the breath whilst you're doing. And you can work the downward action from your rib cage you can what you mustn't do is work to pull yourself around on the inside it needs to all be a feeling of using the ground to open into space as you retain the breath and before it gets too much wherever you've arrived release into your hands release into your center let go of everything Do it again. Relax. Take a small breath in. Satisfying breath. And when you're ready, when you can, quite simply, bear down with the retaining breath. What you're working as you bear down is the rib cage. So the chest has to bear down. The side ribs have to anchor down, push down against through your base. The side ribs have to press down through your base and the side ribs work uh, across the head and to the opposite side of the base. Your, your chest works with the back of the base. Um, do let go every now and again. Yeah. So every now and again you just take another breath, you retain it and you bear down to use the ground. And within this, all this intense effort doesn't require superficial effort of pulling around with the shoulders or pulling around with the groin. So you must try and relax your base as you bear down through it using the retained breath. And then you're using, you're engaging with that to move you into a place where you can be vertically balanced in space so that when you decide to let go to the inside, When you start to, when you decide to let go within, you can let go without. So that inward release will equate to your base falling away from you. And if you use the retained breath to organize yourself well in space, then 
that uh, inner release, that release towards the towards the space within you, that happens when you let go of the breath and everything else, will also propel you in space. Okay, uh, one more example. Let's. Um, I know we only did it one side, but I'm running out of time. So let's go on to my uh, standing cameras. Now, uh, please, please don't um, take this as a uh, license to be uh, pushing and pulling the breath for now. Okay? What, what I'm trying to illustrate is the point uh, of letting go of rules and sort of tuning into the nature of So, let's see. No, let, let's make it simple. We'll, we'll just stand on one leg. So, start by just standing on one leg and notice various sort of holding patterns and complications. Try and relax. Try and relax through your joints. There'll be one joint that catches. It could be your knee, your hip, your back, whatever. Okay? Have the experience of it. And notice when you're trying to relax, Notice the rhythms of breathing. Personally, um, I find myself lifting to breathe. And whilst I'm lifting to breathe, I'm unstable. And then when I release the breath, I get heavy again, and that joint catches, whatever it is. Okay. You can get skilled. You can get skilled at letting go into your ground to breathe. And that requires uh, yourself, uh, requires you to sort of organize the forces, the weight, so that you can drop through each and every joint, so that no joint has to catch your weight, including the spine. And if you can find that, letting go to breathe, then when you release, you can release within. You'll get that light feeling. But uh, try this, maybe sort of legs if it's hard. When you relax, take a breath and then bend down from above. It's the held breath that you're using to push through that foot. So it's the chest that works, it's the ribs that work. The core will be retaining the breath within, so it's not being pushed out. It's not a closed throat that holds the breath. It's your engagement with the earth from the breathing gear. So take a breath, retain it for a moment, use the held breath to bear down until you feel like you're floating in space. And that's the point, is the held breath gives you a chance to work out how the whole body can float on the held breath. And it's a, an arrangement, a relationship. Okay? Hard work. <laughs> so. It's not the practice. Retaining the breath isn't the practice, it's the setup to get the whole body to be able to float on the arriving breath. When you release the breath, when you're ready to fully release it, you just let go to the inside, within, you drop within as you drop into your base. And if the, um, oops, if the, if during the breath retention, you manage to find how your breathing gear can relate through your earth in a way that means there's no sense of the spine holding you up. Then when you release to the center of things and release into your base, that spine will be free to be the center of opening. If you've set it up well. So it's a trick, the trick that you can use to work out 
your breathing relationship to the earth. It's intense. It doesn't feel natural in terms of um, holding a position. It doesn't feel natural in terms of doing your yoga. Because you're not. What you're doing is you're working out a relationship, a physical engagement. And But what you're working out is how the mechanism of the arriving breath can be used to support the entire body. And the, you know, the reason why, why you hold your breath when you pick up a heavy weight is to protect your back, it's to pr protect your spine. So if you can use the retained breath to work out your relationships to the ground that allow you to float, to not be held up in the spine, uh, habitual places of the lower back and the neck. The thing that will make it impossible will be retracting in the pelvic floor and the throat at the same time. That will just make you pop because you got, um, you're, you're holding yourself up, as, as, holding yourself up or down as well as looking for support. So that will make it impossible. So um, this intense effort to relate to the earth from your breathing gear is simply a setup is creating the conditions that might allow you to let go into the yoga with the release of the breath and um, the, the the checking that your spine is not carrying your weight checking that no joint is busy bracing against your weight well it'll be hard work <laughs> because your breathing gear will have to do a lot and your proprioceptive uh, balance, balancing will have to do a lot. It'll be hard work, but there's still the quality of float. You'll be able to, you should get the, the ability to float on the breath. And that sets you up to be able to let go into your center with a free spine. And when the spine is not responsible for carrying your weight, it, it generally speaking, it elongates as you let go of the breath. So the spine behind the heart will reverse, the lumbars and the neck won't be responsible for carrying the weight of the head and pelvis or upper body. Um, so the, the upper spine releasing into openness with relaxed lumbars and neck means that the spine elongates wherever you are in space, provided you can release into your center rather than drop your weight towards the ground. You release into your center because you give your weight to the ground, to where where you're making contact. So you know that's the that's the reason it works. You can't be. Um, well, I suppose you can't, that's what you're looking for when you're when you're trying it out. Now I wouldn't advise this as a <laughs> as a, a, a practice to take to your yoga class if you're if you're teaching. Um, it, it's um, it's it's difficult. It's difficult to um, the the thing around. Um, controlling the breath, which I think is a terrible way of looking at it, um, is not. It's not that doable. It's not that sustainable for people and, until you become incredibly controlled. Um, not that. Uh, not that useful for people generally. Um, what, what we're looking for is the nature. But having 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 had a go at that, having you will have awoken to that possibility. No, uh, you're used to lifting, well, um, uh, not you personally, but people in general are used to having to lift with their spines to breathe. And the outcome of that is you collapse when you release the breath. So just right now, as you sit, just check in with the availability of letting go into your ground and allowing the breath to support you. And if it's more available, it's because your breathing gear has become more intelligent. It's got more used to working with the ground. And the breath isn't, doesn't have to be an effort. And then when you release the breath, having found that support from within, when you release the breath, you can release into yourself. You can release through the spine. 
can release into yourself as you give your weight through your base. And the outcome should be an upward release in space. And perhaps because we woke up the breathing gear, the responses, you might feel it as a kind of inward movement, a general sense of dissolving towards, gathering towards, coming together towards your centre. With the ideal feeling of the spine behind the heart being at the centre of release, so that you can meet her in space equally. So uh, there you go. I don't know whether your experience of it a second time round, the the, the non um, deliberate engage, you know, the non deliberate engagement through the breath. Um, but my, my guess is maybe something was different. Having having worked hard to um, use the retained breath to discover better relationships to earth and space. Um, when you return to that sort of trying to find the subtle thing, it should have been more available to you, more present, more obvious. I hope so, anyway. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so it's quite advanced, this stuff, I suppose. Uh, but like I said, the, the advancement really is in the person's ability to kind of be with these relationships. You know, uh, no amount of holding the breath, retaining the breath just for its own sake, will give you these relationships. So if you if you tell a beginner to hold the breath, they'll, they'll lift and they'll hold the lift and they'll also close the throat and, and they'll be giving themselves a hard time. So it, it's not for beginners. Right, you need to have the subtlety of awareness to be able to know when you're letting go of the spine, to be able to tune into inner movements and that sort of thing. So perhaps there is something to be said for um, keeping pranayama from the experts. I don't know, but at the same time, if you have ever yawned and stretched in the morning. This is exactly what you do. You take a breath, you bear down, whilst retaining the breath, so that you get to a place where you can uh, let go. Okay? So as advanced as it might be, provided the person's intent is to find the nature of the thing, you can do it. And it's that fundamental understanding that what we're looking for from all of these advanced yoga practices, what we're looking for is the nature. And the nature is available to absolutely anyone who has a body and breathes. So find your own way with that. Anyway, I hope, I hope that was of interest. That's me for this week. I've, I've gone over time by quite a while. Um, I, I'll be do. Um, I'll be keeping my Saturday morning workshops going. So if you want to come to creating the space to heal part three, which I think will be more to do with the inner workings, um, the the relationship between the fluid core and the rib cage um, from contact, from the way we engage with the earth. Yeah, sort of the the opposite of what I've just been sharing with you. Um, uh, that that'll be this Saturday, uh, ten thirty to one. You can drop in for twenty seven quid. You can become a gold member and and um, turn up for a review only place for free. Platinum member if you want to be there on screen with me. Um, yeah, 20, 27 quid drop in for an interactive place. Fifteen quid for a view only place. And uh, yes, yeah, so I I think I'm gonna run my summer retreat it probably won't be till uh towards the end of august i'm, I'm thinking and it'll be uh, a five day six day online uh daily uh two and a half three hour workshops in the mornings uh and i think this one is going to be for dedicated practitioners only because i want to 
I want to go into deep, some deep territory. And I, um, my current thinking is that this retreat is going to be entitled The Sacred Breath 2. It's a kind of follow on from my Sacred Breath 1 course, which deals with all the um, traditional pranayamas, uh, their purpose, their nature, their function and uh, practice. Uh, it's a course you can, it's a pre-recorded course that you can buy uh, on my website. So that that's coming, I think that'll be towards the end of August, I'm, I'm thinking, possibly September, I'm not sure. I'll, I will keep you posted. But in the meantime, I've got weekly Saturday workshops uh, and you can always book in a free 15 minute consultation with me if, you want, if you've got something going on for yourself you want to inquire into and see if I can offer some insights. Book, book it, it's free, it's free on, uh, was it, aquaviva.yoga forward slash book online. You can uh, just go there and book yourself a free 15 minutes. And if if you have any sort of um, body issue going on that's been with you for any length of time, um, yeah, it, there's no shame in getting some help. Uh, so you can book a one-to-one with me and that can point you in the right direction of what what is needed to help you find resolution for that part of yourself, you know? Um, yeah, oh, that's it. That'll do from me. I've gone way over time, so I shall shut up shop now and say goodbye. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Much love to you all.